Okay, so at the end of uh, day 129, I want to make a little report again, um, because it was an eventful day for various reasons, and um, they're worth discussing. It might take a bit of time, uh, you probably know that already, looking at the video link, but anyway, let me get into it. I ran from Fruitback Falls here to the Jardine Ferry uh, River, uh, sorry, the Jardine River Ferry Crossing, uh, and it was about 55k. But as you know from this morning, um, if you watched that video, I haven't had a lot of food with me lately. I've got these ration packs and I'm kind of rationing it out, which doesn't work that well with endurance running because you need just really large amounts of energy and uh, can't get it all from the amount of food. But anyway, I'm sort of rationing through it. And um, today on the run, I was just on this long, uh, what's called the Northern Bypass Road, so let me explain this. Essentially, when they originally built the uh, telegraph line to, to go up to the top for communications purposes, they just went in a straight line, they went through everything, creeks, hills, whatever. Um, and so it's the fastest way there, but um, not for cars nowadays, you know, it's so worn out that it's now an adventure sort of to go there. Some serious, some of Australia's toughest four-wheel driving is um, the, over, the Overland Telegraph Track or the old Telegraph Track or whatever. But anyway, so then they realised later on, well, how's about we build a proper road up here and, of course, let's build it up in uh, what they call the heathlands, sort of highlands around the area so uh, we don't have to cross any creeks because that's the difficult part in the four-wheel driving. Um, so they built this road that's about, um, yeah, it's a lot longer. Um, so it's essentially longer and lacks water. So I wasn't going to go that way. I went the uh, the telegraph track, and um, but at a certain point, I have to follow it, and because if I keep on going straight, then I get to the Jardine where there's a sort of a ford crossing. But there are most definitely crocodiles in the Jardine. Um, you know, there's the odd chance that there were going to be in those creeks that I passed um, already. I saw a sign for the Cockatoo Creek, which. That was nerve-wracking because it was kind of navel deep and dark water and a sign that says beware crocodiles and you're going, I really would li rather be a lot of other places right now. But anyway, uh, made it through because a lot of the locals said don't worry about it, it's going to be fine, it's just too far inland. It's... Anyway, I'm still alive, so hey. <laughs> uh, I kept thinking to myself, plenty of people die trying to achieve great things, you know. How many people are there in the, the, uh, the dead zone on Everest, you know, in that last, those closing stages anyway it's like you want to do this do it um, anyway it was all fine so yeah as I say right anyway to the point is then I camped at Fruitpath Falls um, and but then I had to take the bypass road to get to the ferry crossing here um, which is a long way without water in very hot conditions and I was reaching a particularly low low um, from lack of food, lack of water, and um, perhaps about the 40k mark. Sorry, I'm just going across to over here because my oh, arm's getting sore. I think it's getting weaker than it used to. I used to be able to hold it out there for anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, I was <sighs> reaching, you know, another kind of rock bottom kind of stage, you know, the type of thing where I think I've described before that feeling of um, this prick of panic that just sort of gets in underneath your um, your cool or your calm and you just, it eats away at you and then you just end up exploding, you just lose it um, and you can't stay calm anymore and, and you're just in a world of pain. And, um, everything's just devastating and anyway I was kind of getting to that point at the moment uh, sorry today and then all of a sudden out of nowhere um, this car pulls because I see cars like once every hour or two um, pulls up behind me and says hey we got some food for you um, and that was just yeah I, anyway they <laughs> pulled over into the shade and um, they said, yeah, hey, um, Jamie and Gail from Bramwell Roadhouse gave us this because we're headed north, and they said that they that we'd see a runner on the road up at some point and to stop and, and give him this food, and sure enough, here you are. <laughs> and I was going, oh, you can't, you got to be kidding me. 
This is awesome because those guys were so nice to me in the first place. They gave me those ration packs, which really are making it um, a lot easier on me than it would have even been carrying the weight of all sorts of, um, of food. But um, look, the point I want to make is that the timeliness of this assistance, of that help that they decided to give me, um, has potentially been life-changing for me. Why do, why do I say that? Um, perhaps I have to go back even a bit further, and that is to get to the point. Remember back in Bundaberg, um, I might have spoken of, uh, I definitely spoke of a particularly bad day running into Bundaberg, where I just kind of had my spirit shattered, and um, I just never experienced such devastatingly yeah, I don't know, let's not bother with that, not in details, anyway. Um, what ended up happening after that was I'd lost my confidence um, for weeks. I was kind of scared that I might um, tip over that edge again and just lose it each day into that sort of world of pain. And um, it took me weeks before I really recovered from that. Um, there's an expression, uh, if you fall off a horse, get straight back on. And my interpretation or what I understand the point of it is to say that um, you kind of develop a fear of say riding a horse or whatever activity you apply the saying to um, if you have a hiccup and then you don't get back into it because you just get so intimidated or scared that you never get back to it in the end and it just builds and builds and builds and for whatever you know because I set out and I really do want to achieve this goal, um, I forced myself for weeks and weeks and weeks to run, you know, often without enjoyment, often with, you know, just this um, fear deep down inside. And um, I recovered from that in the end, which is brilliant. But today, um, after a couple of days of some seriously long, hard distances, and not a lot of food, not a lot of water... I was I was kind of reaching that point again, um, and I guess, yeah, yeah, I, I found myself thinking, I'm, I'll be glad once this is all over. Look, it's been fun, you know, it's been great, but really, I never want to do anything like this again. This is just um, too much pain, too much hurt, too much effort involved. I've earned enough respect from doing this. Uh, I'm going to live off that for the rest of my life. Who cares? Um, I can just settle down and stop challenging myself from here on in. And um, that was the mindset when I was oh, a good four or five liters dehydrated and um, seriously lacking any glycogen whatsoever. And then all of a sudden, I'm sitting on the side of the road with these people getting chocolate bars, new. Uh, like sports drinks, uh, sandwiches, lollies, all sorts of stuff that's picking me up, picking me up. And next thing you know, like, you just couldn't stop me. Like, I was running now into the ferry with just great speed and thinking, yeah, what am I going to do next, you know? Um, and the difference that that would have made, perhaps if I had have struggled on for another um, 10 to 15 kilometers, just agonizing all the way... Um, I think it's entirely possible that I would have been scarred by it, um, like the Bundaberg one, but with only two days to go, I might not have the chance to get back on the horse. Um, I think I would have just washed my hands of it and said, I'm glad that's over and I never want to do anything like that again. Um, so it's made such a difference. I know, my, my point is, be nice to people, be kind, be generous. And if you pick the right moment, it really can be life-changing. I have no doubt that um, Jamie and Gail have changed my life. Maybe I will go on and climb Everest or something along those lines. Who knows? I'm going to dream up something. But um, I feel like it would have taken a lot longer than it will or whatnot had it not been for that small and timely advice, uh, help. And I'm sorry, this is going to take a little while uh, I hope you're interested the point goes on um, I was running on to here at the uh, the ferry crossing um, yeah 
Okay, so I'm staying here the night, and no, there's no one else here, because it's after five, and I am in this house here, but the guys from the local engineer community who, um, who run the ferry uh, have gone home for the evening, um, but they've left me the house that's here for their sort of sake um, in the wet, they said, that they stay here from time to time stuff like that, perhaps if they can't get across the, the ferry, if it rains too much in a day, I, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, just left it open and the generator running for me for the night, and they said see you in the morning. Um, but when I got here as well, um, I'd called him about a week ago to say, I'm coming, do you have any food there at the moment? He said no, I said, is it possible if you could get some in, maybe some pies or some sausage rolls or something like that. And um, along the way, look, there's... A whole lot of history and background to this ferry crossing. There's um, a whole lot of unhappy campers um, who seem to think the rate's too high or that they don't get good service and stuff here. And I'm not going to vouch for that. I'm not going to say anything about that. But what I was met with here today was straight away this guy, Charles, who runs the place. Warm, welcoming. Um, Hey mate, got those pies for you, come in, here's, you know, pie and a sausage roll for free. Go grab yourself a drink out of the fridge there, just covered. Come down, have a chat. I said, oh, can I charge my phone? And I'm um, sure, enough, yeah, yeah, no worries, charge that up. And then I'm up here at the house, next thing, sort of chatting with some of the other boys. Um, and, and yeah, and then, so what are you planning on doing? Oh, well, camping. Oh, mate, don't worry about camping, you know, we'll leave the house open for you and stuff like that. You can stay there the night. And at one point, I had to put this. At one point, I asked, I said, So is anyone on the north side of the river? Um, how do you know if anyone's coming? And they said, Oh, well, you know, oh, we can kind of see from here if there's a car there, if you're sitting in a particular spot just over there. Um, or, you know, they honk the horn or whatever. And it just kind of clicked, you know, perhaps there are some cultural differences there, but. Um, there's no malevolent intention or anything like that. It's just, you know, yeah, we're running this place. We're on Bamaga time or, or, or whatever. And, um, but whenever it comes to someone that they see, and I like to think of myself as a nice person, as a generous person, um, I think that just bounces back and forth between people. And they genuinely wanted to help me and as soon as I arrived they were as nice as could be to me and I think that kind of bounces back and forth so I have a lot to think and a lot to reflect on this day and that's why I've talked for so long right now but it's something that I want to think about later on um, but I think be nice always be kind and generous to people because the impact that it can have if it's timely is just massive and always do it for the sake of the fact it'll just come back to you it'll just reflect back and forth straight back at you so um, I suppose those are some morals or something like that but, um, yeah anyway brilliant day by the end um, I'm so relieved some of the biggest stuff is out of the way uh, I've just got two fairly short days to go and then I can I'll be at the tip. It's hard to believe, as I've been saying to a lot of people. I, I couldn't imagine how I was going to get there where I started, and now I can't even remember how I got here. I'm just, I'm just here. But, whew. right, on. I better shut up now. Okay. Thanks for watching. If you listen to all of this, I hope you learnt something from all of that. Uh, have a good one. Catch you tomorrow.